Someone needs to turn up my earpiece. I can't hear anything. I can't hear the director. Hey YouTubers, welcome back to professional video production on a shoestring budget. Last time I showed you uh, some basic mic techniques, how you can get better quality even with your little camera mic by, by getting it closer to, your, closer to your subject. Today I wanted to show you some different kinds of mics um, and some different characteristics of the common mics that we use. Um, I'm using the, uh, my lavalier mic right now. It's a, <clears throat> it's a wireless, it's a wireless mic. It's a UHF. It's an Asden UHF mic, uh, 340, I think, B&H, of course. And I've been pretty happy with it. It works quite well. I guess one of the big differences between this and the really expensive ones might be the range, but I don't need to get 200 feet from my camera to, you know, make any dramatic points. Um, it works pretty good. It, it's an omnidirectional mic and it works well, especially in controlled environments. It needs to be close. As soon as you start getting away from the mouth, you can hear it gets hollow real quick. It needs to be real close to your subject. You see people use these all the time in the in, in television industry. They're really common. Uh, you see a lot of shows where there's an on-camera host where he's interviewing people and they'll use wireless lav mics and that way they can move around and and the other, and the person might be doing some demo stuff and they can move and it gives them a lot of freedom but it gets pretty pricey if you want to if you want to get into the UHF type of mics which I recommend and I'm going to talk about UHF and VHF in another segment um, but if you want to get into the UHF systems they start at around $800 for for two mics from the UHF so it, it can run into money. Um, if you have a couple of lav, if you have a couple of lav mics, and you can't afford the wireless system, you can use wire. You can use cables. You can get a couple of mic cables and run those out. Of course, your talent has to be careful of, you know, not tripping over the cables. They can't move around as much. It doesn't give them the freedom, but you'll get the quality of the audio, which is that's what's important: getting good quality audio. Um, but there's another way you can go when you have, you know, if you have a, a talent and a, and a you know, you've, you've got your host and he's interviewing people. And um, let's have a look at that other method. So the other thing you can uh, do is you can use a shotgun mic where your host, uh, especially if you have a host that's inter interviewing people on camera, he can, uh, he can use the shotgun and he can go back and forth. You see people do this all the time, especially in local news. You'll see reporters do this a lot in local news. And that's because it's just faster and quicker and easier. And a lot of them have wireless handheld mics as well. And it's just, you know, it's just, it's just run and gun type stuff. You know, they can, they can get somebody on camera and they're interviewing them, boom, right away. They don't have to set up a lav mic and, you know, fart around. It's just, it's just really easy. This mic here... This is, this is a bear microphone. It's a fairly high-end mic. It was about $800. I didn't pay $800. A friend gave it to me because it needed some work done, and I had to send it back to New York to get it fixed. But it was still a pretty good deal, considering he gave it to me. Um, so it's a pretty nice mic. But uh, I want to show you a, a less expensive alternative. I want to show you my other shotgun mic. This is my other shotgun mic. I bought this, I don't know, 15 years ago. It's an Audio-Technica. And I think I paid around $300 for it. And it's a pretty nice mic. I've been really happy with it over the years. I've used it a lot. With the Fur Master, I've done interviews on Whistler Mountain in raging windstorms. And it's performed really well. You can see the difference in the two mics. It's a little bit bigger. And I think you can hear a little bit different, a little bit of a difference in the audio quality. The Audio Technica is actually a little bit brighter. And I kind of like that. Um, but I've been really happy with it for, for the price. So if you can afford it, I highly recommend it. If you're, if you're getting into a little higher end camera and you want to get more serious about, about video production, make sure you have some money in the budget for a decent mic. And if all you can afford is a shotgun, you can get a lot of bang for your bike. You can get a lot of bang for your buck, you know, in a, in a entry level shotgun mic. So I really recommend you know, making room in your budget. If you're going to spend a bit more money on your camera, if you're moving up in your camera, you know, with and it's got balanced audio especially, have room in your budget for a, a shotgun mic. So the other difference 
the other big difference between the shotgun and the lavalier mic in their characteristics is the shotgun mic is really directional. Um, so it's really useful in the field, especially. You can use anything in the office and it sounds great. But when you get out in the field, in different scenarios, the shotgun mic is really handy. Years ago, I did an interview in a sawmill. And my, my cameraman, I, I had a cameraman with me, and he, you know, we had a shotgun mic out, and, I, and I, I, you know, questioned him. I said, you sure we can do an interview like this? It's going to be okay? And he assured me the sound would be fine. And sure enough, he was right. The sound was great. I mean, you could hear the sawmill in the background, but my interview subject was front and center, and, and his sound was, it was just fine. I got the mic right up, you know, underneath his mouth, uh, but it, it sounded great. Have a listen to something I shot a couple of months ago. This was in a really noisy yeah, hall, uh, and started, uh, um, I got the shotgun mic right underneath Charlie's the, uh, mouth, and you can hear it. It sounds pretty good. Have a listen to it. And uh, the festival is uh, in celebration of Lunar New Year, and uh, we are using the traditional art of lantern making and integrating sounds it Sounds pretty good. So there you go. Um, I think if I had the lavalier mic on him in that scenario, it wouldn't have sounded nearly as good. You would have heard more of the hall noise and whatnot. So I think, I think that worked pretty good for, for that scenario. Next time, what I want to do is let's go out in the field with these two mics, the lavalier and the shotgun, and uh, let's go out in the field on a windy day and uh, see how it sounds. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. I need to do that again. Somebody coughed off camera.